previous video I talked a little bit about vampirism and seduction being a little bit similar in that the person who is doing that depresses their own energy and allows the other energy entry into their space. Now I want to talk a little bit about the opposite effect. Uh, hypnotism, mesmerizing people and in a way reprogramming people. This works through a very opposite way of working. So rather than depressing your own energy, you are in way uplifting your own energy, making it stronger, putting it into a higher vibration, and at the same time, if possible, putting the other people in a lower vibration, which is more open, more susceptible to receiving your energy. We are herd animals, which makes it relatively easy to, um, to work with this. We all have herd instincts of follow the leader. So often there will be very subtle things, like, um, for instance, the person doing it will be on a stage, will be elevated, you will have to look up to their position. So you're in a way already in a subservient state. Um, the other thing they might do is they might ask you to do something. Now this can be very friendly, of course, like, oh, put your hands together, interlock your fingers. But by the very act of obedience, you're already also, again, putting yourself in a subservient, into a receptive state towards the person who is, in a way, um, going to influence you. The person who is doing the controlling will often use the setting to gain that type of control. We are all herd animals, so we all have this instinct to follow the leader. So often the person who is doing it will be on a raised level, will be on a stage, or will be standing while other people are sitting. So you're in a, way in a passive state, looking up towards the active leader, the one who's showing what is happening, what is going on, and you're also physically looking up towards them. And this puts you already in a more passive, uh, receptive state towards the person who is sending out the signals. Another way to do it is by simple acts of obedience. And those things can often be phrased in a very friendly way, like, oh, please put your hands together and interlock your fingers, or let's have some applause for. And um, you're almost automatically going along with it, but you're also going into a pattern of obedience, of allowing the other person's instructions uh, to be followed and to override any instructions you have of your own. Then there's also the modern techniques of uh, voice amplification. So their voice can be heard. Their voice is everywhere and your voice is nowhere. Um, they are in the light. You are in darkness. You are in a way anonymous also, while they are known and the center of the attention of the whole group, which also grants them importance. And often also you will have video screens where their faces or forms will be far enlarged, making them seem big while you yourself are small. But all these techniques are very important to, in a way, create um, fertility within the group for whatever they are sowing. They're also elevating their own energies. Usually they hype themselves up by creating a very strong belief in themselves, in what they're doing. So often they are very uh, motivated. Uh, they really believe in their method, in their ideals, in their morality, in their uh, religion, in their convictions, in their message. Um, whether they really do it or not, they make themselves believe it uh, before they go on stage or before they start their performance. But, of course, besides having the relatively low energy with the people who are paying attention to them and their own high energy, there also needs to be a link. They need to connect. 
And to do that, they generally amplify their own aura. And often they will also focus on one or a few members of the audience and use them more or less as a model for the rest of the audience. And by uh, looking at that specific person, they can gauge how well they are able to, uh, to reach the group or to influence the group. When they're doing this, they're also often choosing a very specific pace. And generally the pace they will set will be slightly higher than the pace which is easy or comfortable to follow and to ponder about for the public. If I would state something and the other person would have the time to think and to gauge do I agree or do I disagree, what is my own opinion, how do I think about it then you're not following, then you're being critical. So they need, before you can start or even fin or finish or even start such ruminations, they need to bring up the next idea or the next idea or the next idea. And by, in a way, bombarding you with things which are not easily digestible, statements in general, because statements have an apparition of being true, if they are spoken with conviction, without necessarily being true or even logical. But by making statement after statement, then the person becomes overwhelmed. And rather than try to keep up with all these statements, they decide like, okay, I'll just accept that for true for the moment until I have more time, but the more time never comes. Because usually these, yeah, bouts of influencing uh, will go on and on and on for a certain period of time. And this is the essence of, uh, of brainwashing and also of public speaking and populism. In hypnotism, it is a very similar skill to uh, public speaking or performance. Uh, the difference is that rather than just going for uh, a short-term effect or a short-term uh, euphoria which you're trying to create in the people who are listening to you, you're trying to create deeper changes actually within the aura. So for a hypnotist or a person who's trying to, to mesmerize someone else, it's not only about getting the person to go along, with what you're saying, as it is often in, in public rallies, uh, you're actually trying to change the person's aura. You're trying to change the structure. So, rather than only like bombarding the person and getting them into a receptive state that your influences will, in a way, be stronger than their own influences, turning them into, into followers rather than to independently acting agents. You're trying to reprogram them a bit. To reprogram, we have to be aware that a lot of our processes are happening in the aura. So they're not happening only in our brain, but also in our aura we create relations between different thoughts, different memories, different parts of our uh, emotions. So it is, you could say the aura is very similar to the brain. It is almost the energetical copy of the brain when it comes to these processes. And even though the brain itself cannot be directly influenced by somebody talking, they can influence the aura directly. If they speak an idea or inst instruction. That idea can be merely words, but it can also be really a, a program which can be inserted in another person's aura. So for instance I can just talk about something like, gosh, it would be nice to have a cucumber sandwich. And then the only image I have is like a cucumber sandwich. This is a very simple image and the people can associate cucumber sandwich with whatever they like. 
but if I use a more hypnotic or mesmerizing technique, when I'm saying the same thing, I'm not only thinking about the, the end result of the cucumber sandwich, I'm actually transferring a whole complex of instructions of liking cucumber sandwiches, of connecting these emotional parts of happiness, of enjoyment, of good taste, uh, desire to uh, the concept of cucumbers and sandwich. So I can say the exact same thing. It would be nice to enjoy a cucumber sandwich. And while the words may be the same, the energy being transferred is very different. You're in a way transplanting an own, your own energy construct by your voice into the other person's aura. And the other people who are receptive, who are open to your aura, can pick up these activated structures and they will become part of their own structure. So, in a way, you are thinking for them, not just getting them to obey, but actually putting thoughts into them, putting behavior into them, putting associations into them. So not everybody has this skill. So on the one hand you have to be a bit of a performer, you have to be able to elevate your own energy, uh, possibly also depress or make passive the other person's energy. But most importantly you really need to understand the concepts which you're talking about. You need to have a grip on yourself. You in a way have to be not only, um, you could say, a performer who is acting out a role or who is mouthing the words, but you have to be an actor who is actually being the words, being what you're saying. And when you are working as a hypnotist, you have to be the very thing you are saying to your client. And by this act of, in a way, um, acting not only with your voice or with your body, but also with your energy, you can put these patterns of behavior into the other person as well. So you're not only using yourself to act, but you're actually using the bodies of others to act as well. Uh, you could say that there's almost like a hive mind, you're the, the, the queen bee and all the drones are hearing your instruction and picking up your programming. And if you look at great motivational speakers, you will find that they have these traits. They have the traits of course of using all the, all the tricks to get the audience to, uh, to submit to them. Uh, they have the trick of elevating their own energy, but most importantly they have a hypnotic or mesmerizing power to project their beliefs, their will structure, their personality structure into that of others. And for such a will structure to be um, accepted, often they need to be idolized, they need to be looked up to, so that other people believe that following them or doing things in their way is better than doing things in their own way. So another requirement is image, that the person will often, uh, whether it is true or not, try to create an image of themselves being um, successful in some way or desirable or um, achieving what they want or being an epitome of something. So this is what creates a charismatic leader and how charismatic leadership actually functions on the aura level. So I hope that this will be interesting because uh, throughout history there have been charismatic leaders and they are still popping up again and again and these processes are really quite essential in shaping our society. So if we look at people who have this public speaking, hypnotic or mesmerizing qualities, 
uh, we often find that these people are either performers or politicians or union leaders. So there are people who are in a way uh, there only for a very short period of time and in that short period of time they have to overcome the existing yeah, structure, the existing you could say hierarchical leadership and to trump the normal bosses by their overwhelming presence. And to generate such an amount of energy cannot be done if you're fighting with yourself, if you're uncertain about yourself, if you're struggling with yourself. So to be a really good at this, you really need to be able to believe and to be able to commit to what you're doing. And the other thing you need to know is to understand when to push and when not to push. Because at the moment you meet resistance, and when you push, then you are going to activate that resistance. You should only push when you feel that there is no resistance, and that you can easily push over the other person. So if you start pushing and the other person is not giving, then you will just start pushing harder and harder from both sides. And this is what you want to avoid. You only want to push if the other is already teetering and then will just fall and you can continue. So, you need a well-developed and an open heart chakra to be able to do this. You need to be able to sense the other, to feel when they are ready for your statement to be accepted. So when can you deliver it? The other thing you need is to have a real understanding of what it is that you're transferring. You need to have the concept as a whole. You can't just make something up and tell it, uh, because then it only exists on a mental level. It is not an instruction for the entire being of how to be. Uh, so you have to really prepare, you have to be able to experience it. Like in this case of the cucumber sandwich, you have to be able to experience it, to taste it, to feel the joy, to feel the whole of it, to understand the essence of it, because only then can it be transferred. So you need a little bit of a um, philosophical or meditative mindset of understanding yourself or what your words and feelings mean, what the concepts mean which you are talking about. And last but not least, you need an unshakable will. You need to be able to manifest this as truth, or at least your truth, and that it must be so. So only if you have more or less a well-developed energy body and a well-balanced energy body are you able to work in this fashion. The most common error people make when trying to do this, but they're failing, is that they're using only their higher chakras. They have this idea, this concept, and they are, have some moral ideas of comparisons, why this is better, and they think that just because they are more wise, they are more right, that people will listen to them. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. It also doesn't work to just appeal with only the heart. To say like, yes, people will feel that you're brothers and sisters or that you're one or that you care about them and this will gain you sympathy. But even when people are sympathetic to you, it doesn't mean they will listen to you, they will do what you say or to even allow your views to influence them. Only a person who can have this balance between their own will, um, their own uh, sensitivity and emotions and their own mind can really be a master of this art of persuasion. It also requires that the chakras are quite open so that the energy can project well from all these energy centers into the aura to make the aura indeed energized and strong enough to carry this message for you. The aura itself will also need to be quite strong, quite large. But often you find that to create an aura which is large enough, 
People will also use seduction techniques. They will invite the energy of the audience to come into their space and they will use the attention and the power of the audience to enlarge their own auras so it can reach further away from them and fill the whole stadium. So energetically speaking, performance is really uh, like the top level of, uh, of energetical exercise, energetical skill, sports almost. What also helps is to put the people in uh, the correct mood before they go into it. So in general you want to create people who are a little bit unstable because if they're unstable they're easier to guide, easier to tip over. So generally yeah, serving alcoholic beverages will help. Uh, also things which um, affect the people emotionally and this can be either through horror uh, through indeed violence, fear, uh, indignation, um, or through lust, uh, food, uh, music, dance, um, beauty, and both things create a kind of a, a craving for stability. Because one, although a person might be exhilarated by beauty. They also feel slightly giddy by it and they will want to regain control. And when a person is confronted with, yeah, in a way, horrors, then they also are looking for that security. And the person who has this mesmerizing power is able to provide it. So you're creating a need before you start filling the need. And this is also, again, the art of seduction. So you find that the greatest you know, populist leaders often are masters of this art. I hope that this information will uh, give you some new insights into how people move people.